this is Katie. In today's video, I want to talk about traveling with anxiety. A lot of you guys know that I've traveled a lot in my life. I've lived in this car on and off for the past 10 years. I've gone on a lot of road trips, especially by myself. And also a lot of you guys probably know that I do suffer with anxiety, depression, PTSD, OCD. I do have a couple things that just uh, are difficult about my brain. And so I do get asked the question sometimes, like, what do you do traveling with anxiety? And so I kind of wanted to talk about that a little bit in today's video. I might make this into a two-part video. And so in this video, I'll probably give, I don't know, four or five tips or so on what I think could be helpful if you are someone who wants to travel by yourself, go on a road trip by yourself, or even if you're gonna be traveling with some friends, what to do if you start to get anxious one day or what to do if you have like a generalized anxiety disorder disorder, kind of how to handle that and still be able to like thrive through it and still hopefully be able to like enjoy your experience traveling even when you have anxiety. Because I do understand the idea that some people who deal with mental health issues, I understand the idea of it kind of keeping you away from a lot of things that you might enjoy or a lot of things that you want to do in your life because it makes things feel a lot harder. And sometimes it even makes things feel impossible. You know, if you have depression, anxiety, anything really severe in your brain, I understand how sometimes that can make thriving feel impossible, but I want to talk to you guys today in a way that hopefully might just give you a couple tips. I'm not a doctor or anything, but just to give you a couple tips where maybe even when you do have anxiety that you still can thrive and that you still can reach your goals and that you can still do something like traveling because I promise it is possible. I'm not going to say that traveling with anxiety or traveling with depression is easy, but I am going to say that if traveling is like a really top goal for you, I just want to be the one here to tell you that it is possible to travel when you have anxiety or depression and it's actually possible. Again, I'm not saying it's easy or that it's going to happen for everyone, but it is possible to enjoy it and have fun and have a really good experience. So I know that was like a really long intro, but I really hope that you are subscribed. I am going to do a lot more videos like this travel tips and road trip tips because I just have a lot of experience with it. And so I just want to share some of my knowledge with you and some of my tips and some my advice and yeah so I hope that you guys enjoy this video and I hope that you're subscribed but let's just go into the tips that I have okay so again I'm not a doctor I'm not any kind of like licensed professional or anything like that I just want to give tips that I think could be helpful to some people if you are gonna be traveling and if you have anxiety and also I understand that a couple of these might seem like common sense but what I always say is even if something's common sense it does not discount it as sometimes actually being helpful or actually sometimes being true and so sometimes if you discount something just because it's common sense, oh, that's common sense, so whatever, sometimes you might actually be missing out on something that could be helpful. So even if they seem like common sense to you, see if you can try them and see if they help you. The first one, this is going to sound so obvious, but I promise you that almost every single one of us actually still does this, even though it sounds obvious to not do it. Don't do things that make you feel worse. And I know that might sound really, 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 really obvious, but also I have two different points of this because sometimes we have to do things out of our comfort zone. I would argue that doing something out of your comfort zone all the time is the only way to grow. I think it's really healthy to do things out of our comfort zone. I think it can be really helpful and help us learn and help us grow. I firmly believe that, but that is very different in my personal experience than something that is not necessary, but that's causing you anxiety. And so let me give you like two examples. Say you are watching a TV show and there's a lot of like really weird negativity in it. And you realize that when you watch it, you kind of start to feel anxious or you get negative thoughts or you get a little depressed or anything like that. But you continue to watch it because you've been watching it the last couple of weeks or because your friends are watching it. And so you're watching it with them or because everyone else loves it and they recommended it to you. So you're just still watching it, even though you can tell it's causing you negative emotion. That is what I'm talking about. What I'm not talking about and what is almost like the third point, but I'm kind of grouping it in here is that we have to get out of our comfort zone. So an example of that might be like, say you're an introvert, but that you really have a goal of talking to people more and being a little bit more extroverted. Say that's a goal that you have. You have to get out of your comfort zone to reach that goal. That might cause some type of anxiety, but you know what? Watching a TV show that causes you anxiety, but you're not learning anything from it, you're only kind of doing it because you've been doing it or because your friends recommended it versus I'm an introvert, 
but I just do think that talking to people could be helpful for my life. And so even though I might be anxious while I'm doing it, I know it's going to be beneficial in the long run. Those are totally different things. And so I am on board with this. I do think this could be good. Maybe you got to take baby steps. I totally understand that, but this could be good. This over here, maybe just don't do it. So that's kind of the point I was getting with. Don't do the things that make you anxious. I'm talking about the pointless ones. I'm talking about the ones that just cause you pain, but there is no benefit after. Because again, we are going to have some things that take us out of our comfort zone or that while we're doing it, we're really, really nervous or anxious. But then afterwards, we know we're going to be grateful that we did it. It's helping us in some way. Sometimes it is easy for us, especially if we have brains that are a little bit more difficult to handle sometimes, it can be really easy to stay uncomfortable just because the similar discomfort is easier than an unfamiliar discomfort. And so I think the example that I've given in a recent video was, have you ever noticed that you're sitting or lying down and then after an hour, you're like, my back has hurt this whole time. And then you still don't move. I've done that so many times. And it's similar to that when we do things mentally. I realize that watching this TV show makes me cry. And again, not in a fun way, not in a way that's helping me learn, nothing like that. Just it scares me or something. And it makes me cry and it makes me freak out. But I'm just still watching it anyway because I'm used to it. I always want to say, do what you can to not do that anymore. If you know that you're doing something, if you have like a habit in your life almost, but you can tell it's causing you pain and it's not necessary, it's not going to help you grow, see what you can do to cut it out. It's going to be difficult because we got to be honest with ourselves. We got to admit to ourselves that maybe we've kept a habit in our lives that's unhealthy. We've kept it for too long. So some of that stuff is a lot of like thinking about things and really just being honest with ourselves. But I do think a way to decrease some anxiety is to literally just look at the habits that we already have and cut out the unnecessary ones that are hurting us or cut out the unnecessary ones that even aren't helping us, you know, and see what we can do to add more positivity or more joy in our lives. But again, I am going to keep repeating this side over here. If it's something that's taking you out of your comfort zone, but you know it's healthy for you, do it anyway, even if you feel anxious. And I know that's one of my parts on here. One of the points that I have is do it afraid. That is probably the biggest piece of advice that I have. And I have always believed in this. And the whole idea is no matter what emotion you're feeling, do the action anyway. If you know the action is going to be healthy, beneficial, helpful, if it's going to help you learn something or you're going to grow or it's going to be a really positive experience, even if you're afraid to do it, do it anyway. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at this. No one is. But I'm saying that that's a really good rule to live by, I believe. And there are always going to be exceptions. And of course, you know, but generally, I think that a lot of the times when you're afraid of something, it generally means it's actually really healthy for you. And you probably only have that fear because it's something new. And because our brains are not wired to do new things and to grow and learn, our brains are wired to keep us safe. And what is safe to our brains? What we've already been doing. So our brains like to stay the same. And so it kind of is beneficial for us to kind of tell yourself, hey brain, I know that you're trying to tell me that I'm scared right now in hopes that I don't do this cool thing that I want to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. So brain, you shush right now. I'm going to do it anyway. And I think the same is for if you're feeling anxious about something. Again, if it's something that you know is going to be healthy, it's going to be positive, it's going to help you learn something, please believe me that I do understand how debilitating it can feel sometimes. I really do understand that. But I also understand that it is possible. I'm not going to say easy and I'm not going to say it's going to happen for everyone, but I'm just saying it is possible that we can take that anxiety and the action that is connected to and still do the action. And I'm not saying every single time, I'm not saying every single person, but it is still possible a lot of the time to still do the action, even if we feel the anxiety. And I was watching some woman on Instagram the other day. If I can find the video, I'll like have it linked below. But basically she is a very successful entrepreneur. I think she's in her 20s or maybe she's 30 and she's worth like $100 million. And so if you define success by money, she is very successful. If you define success by growing a business, she is very successful. And one of the things she's talked about on her Instagram and maybe on podcasts or whatever, but at least I saw it on her Instagram, was about how a lot of people who have anxiety or fear, they use that as a reason to not do something. And of course, we all know that. That happens a lot to most of us. That happens a lot to us. I'm afraid of doing that, so I'm not going to do it. That happens. But Again, if we can really, really dig deeper, we can, some of us at least, can admit that I'm scared of that, so I'm not going to do it, ah, except, you know what, if I did do it, it might even be better for me. And so what this woman was saying in her Instagram post that I saw was something like a lot of people use anxiety and fear to keep them away from doing something, but that what she does 
And she uses it to push herself more. She uses it almost as like a catalyst. And I'm not saying that that's easy at all. I'm not even saying that I do that all the time, but I'm saying that I saw this woman talk about that and I thought it was so brilliant because a lot of us have seen these emotions as negative because they hurt us. And so we see them as negative, that we don't want them, or that if they're coming about, that means that we're in danger and that we shouldn't be doing the thing, that we shouldn't be doing it because I'm afraid or because I'm anxious. But what this woman was talking about was like, no, if you feel that fear, not only do it anyway, but use it to push you, use it to drive you. And I just thought that was an interesting concept because I've never really heard that before. Like I definitely have heard feel the fear and do it anyway, or do it afraid. I've heard those, but I've never heard it in the way that this woman explained it. We're like, use it as a catalyst, use that emotion and use it to push yourself. And so again, I'm not saying that that's going to help everyone, but I'm curious if that resonates with you a little bit, or if that kind of helps you see something a little bit differently, because hearing that from her makes me see the world a little bit differently, that we don't need to use these painful emotions and let them hold us back. We can use them and almost like flip them around and be like, I'm going to use that to grow my business. Or if we're talking about travel again, that's what this video is about. I am going to use that anxiety to travel. I'm going to push through it and I'm going to use that energy to thrive through it in whatever way I possibly can. And so I thought that was really, really interesting, but it is just the whole idea of like, don't let the negative emotions stop you from doing something that you know is really right for you, you know? And that is so hard. I get it. But I just think that could be helpful if you are able to like sit with your emotion, be like, all right, I'm feeling this, I get it, but I don't need to let it dictate my life. And I don't need to let the emotion hold me back which again, I know is very difficult, but sometimes it can work if you have that right mindset. Because a lot of this is about mindset, right? So the last thing that I'm gonna talk about that could potentially help with your anxiety, especially if you're traveling, is creating plans and creating goals. And again, this totally depends on the type of person that you are, but sometimes we get anxiety because of the unknown, right? I'm anxious about going on a road trip by myself because what if this, 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 and this happens? You know, a lot of the times we have anxiety, it's because we've either never done it before or maybe we've had a bad experience with it in the past and so we don't want to do it again because we're anxious about it or because someone else has talked negatively about it or someone else is letting their fear dictate what they're telling you and so now they're giving you really scary advice, any of that kind of stuff. Anxiety generally comes from uncertainty and like fear of the future and fear of the unknown and fear of the what if, all that kind of stuff is generally where a lot of this anxiety can come from. And so if you are anxious about traveling by yourself, Yourself. I am a firm believer of not letting all the what ifs worry you. You guys know that. I'm like a really big believer in, yes, a lot of bad things can happen, but most of them don't happen. And so letting them worry you is not going to be helpful. But what is helpful, I think, is to potentially prepare for them. And so again, if you're going to be traveling by yourself, if you're going to be, say, driving through the whole state of Montana by yourself in your car, don't worry about what's going to happen if your car breaks down. Don't worry about what's going to happen if you don't see a gas station for an hour and you're running out of gas. Don't worry about what if there's bears. Don't worry about all those things. Instead of worrying, just potentially make a list of what you're worried about, write them down, and then write down what you would do about them if they did happen. Because a lot of the times when we're actually in a situation, it is less painful, less scary than we're worried that it might be. I've had a lot of situations happen in my travels. Again, I have traveled this country by myself a lot, a lot. And I've had a couple things that are scary if you think about them happen to me. I locked my keys in my car once in a random parking lot in like Nebraska. My car has broken down on the highway before. I've gotten sick several times. I have had those things happen. And if you've never traveled or if you're about to travel, those things might be your worries and those things might be what's holding you back. But you know what? Me getting sick in the car or me locking my keys in my car or my car breaking down randomly, even if I knew that those things were going to happen in my 10 plus years of traveling by myself, it still would not have stopped me from doing it because every single choice that we make is going to have something negative happen. There's pros and cons to everything. You know what I mean? And so even not traveling is going to have pros and cons. Staying in your house is going to have pros and cons. And sometimes we only see the pros of things that we've done for a long time. But in reality, living in a house, someone can still break in or there can still be a storm and a tree could fall in. Like there are bad things that could happen, but the longer that you do it, the less that you think about them because you realize that they're possible, but they're unlikely. And so it's kind of the same thing of, of traveling by yourself, whether you're in a car, even if you're flying or anything like that, can bad things happen? Yes, of course they can happen. But is it likely that all the things you're worried about are gonna happen? No. 
And is it likely that all the things you're worried about are going to happen and be as bad as you think they're gonna be? No. And so what I believe, instead of worrying about all these things and letting the worry stop you or scare you, what I believe is to just prepare. So if you do have a worry of what if I run out of gas? Well, prepare first, look at a map, look what road you're gonna be on, and then look up on like Google Maps or whatever and make sure that you know where there's a gas station every hour or so, just in case. If you're worried about running out of food, stock up on food first, stock up on water first beforehand. And also just, Again, do what you can to remind yourself that the things you're worried about are unlikely to happen, but even if they do, you can handle them, especially if you're prepared. So instead of being worried, just be aware that they could happen, but see what you can do to not let it overpower your brain. And I know that's really, really hard. And that's probably why I'm gonna do another like part two of this video, because this video is a little bit more like, here's just a couple things to do. But you might be like, all right, cool, Katie, those seem like good ideas, but how do I even do them? If I've suffered with anxiety for so long, how do I just change my mindset? And again, I'm not a therapist or a doctor or anything, but there is a little bit more advice that I can give. And so I will do a part two to this video, but at least these are more general ideas that maybe you can just think about and maybe you can come up with the more step-by-step -step action plans for yourself. But regardless, with this last one of making plans, making goals, I think especially if you have some goals, then you'll be focused on the goals more than you'll be focused on your anxiety. If possible, and if you can do that, I think that could be very helpful. I think that sometimes making a plan and making goals and actually just like really actively thinking could potentially help. But that's not gonna help everyone because some people are gonna make these goals and then even get more anxious. So that's why I always say that anytime I give advice or anytime anyone gives advice, it does not mean it's for everyone. These are just kind of general ideas that might help some people. And I just personally think that if you have goals, if you are gonna go on a road trip, but you have goals that potentially you can focus more on those goals. And then when you reach the goals, you're going to like feel really good about it. And then potentially not only the planning, but also the like action of doing those things could potentially lessen your anxiety because you're focused on something else and because you're focused on something good and productive. And then again, on top of that, plan things, especially plan the things that you're worried about. Like even making a to-do list for the day could potentially lessen your anxiety of what am I going to do today? And so if you're feeling anxious, if there's any way, this is the last bit of advice I'm going to give. If you're feeling anxious, if there's any possible way to switch that focus to something productive or healthy or fun, I think that could be good. I really do. If you are someone who, when you're anxious, if you go for a walk, that helps, then do that. That's great. I know that does not help everyone, but I know it helps some people. Or if you go to the gym, if that helps, that's great. Or if you're anxious and you realize that most time you're anxious because you're hungry, go eat. And I know your anxiety might try to tell you, no, you're anxious. Sit in your anxiety. No, go eat. Go eat. Go drink some water. I know a lot of us, especially when it comes to like lower self-esteem or lower self-worth, a lot of us do kind of sit in the negativity. I know that we do that sometimes. And if you are self-aware and you can be honest with yourself, you might be able to admit that too, that sometimes you sit in it. Even if you don't want to, sometimes you do. So do what you can to remind you that you are important, that you are loved, that God loves you and that you are here on purpose. Try to get yourself out of that moment because that could help a lot. It could. And so anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that it was a little bit helpful for you guys. And again, I'm probably going to have a part two next Friday with a couple more like practical pieces of advice. But let me know in the comments anything that you've done that have helped decrease your anxiety. Because again, we are all so different. I could probably make 20 videos on this, you know, because there's different things that are going to help everyone. But if you have something that has helped decrease your anxiety, whether you're staying in one place or you are traveling, please let me know in the comments so we can just, you know, all share it with each other. I love that we can do that on here. But yeah, I guess that's going to be it. I really hope that you are subscribed for more videos like this and vlogs and talking about food and a bunch of stuff on here. I hope that you are subscribed so you can hang out with me a couple times a week. But yeah, I guess it's going to be it. Thank you again for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you. Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you later. Bye.